All right, everyone, let's welcome uh, to the Highland Galaxy and to the Ape Cool Screening, Lily Taylor. Come on now. freaked out <laughs> um, so I was just telling the audience I've seen a whole lot of scary movies and possession films but I don't think in all of my time of doing this I've never actually sat down with the possessed person <laughs> after the movie um, you know you you did the haunting and you played Nell who had psychic phenomena go on before what more did you do to sort of get into the head of this type of character and this sort of uh, kill your own daughter sort of possession? Yeah, yeah this was a whole different um, thing than the haunting. This, this was pretty heavy because um, possessions, being possessed and exorcisms, like YouTube is a wonderful source and it can be frightening. And um, I had to kind of find some real exorcisms on, on YouTube. and. And, and that did it. That did it. <laughs> I don't know if I want to look up exorcism on YouTube. No, no, no you, it's heavy. It's really heavy. It really is. I, I wouldn't do it. I really wouldn't. <laughs> okay, so what was it uh, that initially got you, yes, I have to do this movie. I, I have to be a part of this family. I mean, one, one of the things I love is that the film actually took the time to make us like the family before the perversity comes in and starts making everything horrifically scary. Um, so did um, uh, James Wan approach you? How, how, how did you become involved in the project? Well, I was going to have to fly and, and meet James. Uh, I think he was in North Carolina, and our schedules weren't working out, so I, um, I made a little video of myself on um, iPhone. And so it was pretty rough, and James liked it, and that says a lot about James. What sort of thing was on the iPhone? Um, a, a reading from the from the movie, except it was um, it was raw. It was very homemade, and um, it just shows that James likes. I the reason I wanted to do this was James Wan. I think yeah, he's yeah. so amazing. I mean, he did a great job, right, with this movie. <laughs> and I mean, to do to do old school special effects, no CGI, is just. He, and he just he knows you can do. You can you can do a horror movie and still care about the people. You can have depth in the relationships, complex emotion, and still be scared. Now, did you meet any of the original family members, or um, I believe uh, uh, is it Lorraine Warren? Uh, yeah, she's still alive, right? Did you run across her, meet her, or anything? Uh, Lorraine Warren was on set, but she had more to do with Vera Farmiga and Patrick Wilson, and. Um, I don't know, maybe, be, I don't know, I just sort of stayed a little bit away just because she's a ghostbuster or whatever you'd say, and I was possessed, so I just thought I'll just stay away from that. <laughs> when you're the vessel of Satan, it is yeah, best to stay away from the ghostbusters. Yeah. Um, so, where do you come in on the whole spooky shit category? I mean, like, this is a pretty intense... God and Satan are real. This shit happens. Um, sort of film. Where did you come down? Are you skeptical or are you, I don't want to touch that darkness too much? Would you mind if I ask you first? Feel where free. you're at? Yeah. I believe in everything and I'm terrified of it all. <laughs> um, I think it is safe to believe in all the religions as well as all the science uh, because somewhere the truth is you know and you can't close your mind off to any of the uh, possibilities very well said very well said my feeling is that i i feel like i hold the thoughts that i believe it and i don't believe it simultaneously and i don't feel this pressure to reconcile it I, i'm i'm comfortable with yeah i believe it no i don't and at the same time because I have had a weird experience. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it was. I don't ever want to have it again. Um, I can't explain it, but I love science, but I love, I love being open. I thought you, you just said it perfectly. Cool. Yeah, it's, I mean, there's just 
too many weird things that I can't explain to just say is all, whatever. Um, now, acting is a bit like possession because you have these characters and you become them. Um, playing roles like this, well, well, is it just pure fun to get in the makeup and, and, and to just go batshit insane? Or is there any of that that sort of haunts you at all? You know, it's it's all of it, but it, it does. It this you almost you can't kind of go to that place. You know, the, one of the examples I use is I did this movie where the character was very upset and she was, you know, attempting suicide. And I did this scene all day where she was sort of jumped off this banister and tried to hang herself. It didn't work. She bounced up and down. It was turned out to be funny, but I was still upset. It was Arizona Dream. I don't know if you ever saw that, but. Um, and, oh, excellent, good, good. I, I know, but some people, even that one, are like, no, didn't, didn't get to that one. No, your name's on it, I have to oh, say. Oh, okay, okay. So anyway, I was sort of upset at the end of the day, and I said to a friend, I said, God, I don't feel good, I don't know why. And she, what did you do today? I said, well, I did the scene where I was attempting suicide all day. And, <laughs> you know, and it took her to say, you got to look. So it's like, how, how can I expect? Yeah. So when I, those days when I was really possessed and... I didn't feel so good at the end of the day, and how, how could I, you know? But I also love getting into the makeup. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, when it calls cut, are you the type of actress that remains in character, or do you just instantly start having fun with the people on set? Okay, you're... Yeah, I'm not Daniel Day-Lewis. I wish yeah. I was. <laughs> Let's see if we can get some questions from the audience, because I know you have some fans here. Uh, yeah, are you satisfied with your movie? Are you satisfied with your movie? With this movie, or movies in general, this movie, this movie very, very, I, I, as I love, I love scary movies, and um, they don't, they don't always work, and so when they do, it's great, and that that I was a part of it, and and also I was, I was very moved, and um, I, I love this movie, love it. <laughs> well, I've read that uh, the studio and the uh, James sort of hope that this can become a, a bit of a franchise for them and follow the Warrens as they continue to do other stuff, which of course means that this was the case that had you in it. Um, <laughs> but um, I just hope they do that because, I mean, to get sort of reality-based Ghostbusters going in there and it not be the guy who sets the fin on his head, you know, and goes around Ghost Adventures. Um, this is just, I, I feel... We don't get to see enough period reality-based horror, you know, and, and, and getting to see something like this is really quite remarkable. So thanks for coming. I love that she's eating Twizzlers. Yeah. <laughs> I would love a Twizzler. <laughs> okay, another question from the audience. Yes, up there. Yes, you. Um, I was just wondering, regardless of what you believe or don't believe, did you feel sort of a heightened sense of paranoia after doing the movie? Yeah, like little sounds here and there. Question in case you didn't hear it is, um, after playing the character and being in the scenes in the movie, did you have a heightened degree of paranoia of uh, things that go bump and whatnot? I don't think I did. Um, James would answer yes, he did. And James was scared throughout the whole filming, and I think that's why he's so good, because he feels it all, and if he doesn't feel it, he, he goes back and reworks the scene. But um, for me, I think it manifested differently just sort of with a heaviness. Just obviously, if I'm carrying around that kind of mm, bad energy, I just felt heavier, that's all. What happened to the family after the situation? I think, I think they might have gotten divorced. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> and I, don't, I don't know. I didn't go that much into the family because I felt like we also had to make it our own family. We didn't... Staying so true to reality, you have to allow the film to become what it's going to become and let the book or the whatever be what it was, right. you know? Yeah, I know uh, I read uh, some interview where uh, James, where he, he talked about uh, the fact that he was too chicken shit to actually go to the real farmhouse that uh, was in this movie. Um, and I totally, I'm on his side. Okay. There's the, some, who's the... Who's the young man, uh, who's the person who was a young boy who went to the actual Amityville house when they were a child? That guy. 
braver than any of us in this room. Like, I could not go to the Amityville house. Okay, next question. Over there. So you've been in this and the haunting, but what's your favorite scary movie that you've ever seen? Well, I think it's a tie. Every, every um, once a year, I for sure see, usually in October, because it's just, at least in New York, the weather's getting a little, you know, uh, blustery. Um, for sure, Exorcist and Rosemary's Baby. Um, those are probably my those are probably my top top two that I just try to see each year. Yeah, Mia Farrow is just amazing in that film. I mean, like everything from her haircut to you have your father's eyes. <laughs> it's so fucking creepy. Um, yes, right there. I pointed with a Twizzler. That's so. <laughs> uh, so no, no, right over here. <laughs> yes, you. What was it like freaking the heck out of those kids? What was it like to freak the heck out of the kids? You know, the kids weren't allowed around for a lot of the stuff. The little one was around, obviously, um, towards the end, but I felt like it was more fun freaking the crew out because I had to learn how to yell. I found out also on YouTube, because I realized when I saw the exorcism YouTube clips that the, the, the yelling was very... Um, deep and I realized I'm not gonna have a voice if I don't learn how to yell so then I search how do you yell on YouTube and all these like I guess growlers or I don't know what the music's called um, no disrespect but I just don't know what that genre is called but they scream and they all want to tell you how to scream on YouTube and they all go back to this one woman who taught them all how to scream so I got her CDs and got her exercises so before we Rolled, I would get into some stuff, and the crew was like, didn't know what was happening. It was so fun. That was fun. <laughs> what are some of the basic exercises for screaming? <laughs> well, basically, it's you don't want it to get caught here in the throat. It's kind of pushing the air down, and it's coming from the gut. So it's kind of like, you know, and some exercises. Well, you would do this, you know, basic, nice vocal warm ups, like, whatever they are, and then get into some, uh, you know, get into that kind of thing. <laughs> that was so much fun. Um, over here. Was it, uh, was it easier or more difficult for you to have to do the, the exorcism scene covered in a sheet? Um, because, you know, you're still having, you're so physical in that scene, but like, did that, you know, how did that affect you, having to be covered up? First of all, were you always the one underneath the sheet? And I guess vomiting blood into the sheet had to be a lot fun. Going to that experience of shooting the scene. You know, I love stunt people, and I, I like to do as many, I like to do stunts to the, to where I'm not gonna hurt myself. And um, I love the stunt guy, this, I love the stunt woman, but they, they're stunt people, and they're not accurate, and so, I really wanted to be in there because a few times I saw what she was doing and I thought, oh my God, that's that's just not, that doesn't, I don't believe it at all. So I'm like, I gotta get in there and do it. Um, I found it free and covered up because it's almost like, uh, you know, you, you know, I'm kind of like, I kind of am not, I don't remember people are watching me, I feel freer. So it was actually kind of nice. Um, and then spitting the blood out was fun, you know. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's just all great stuff. I loved his, the special effects makeup guys were fantastic, total artists, and they're both working on me for four hours. I thought I wouldn't like it, but I found it actually a great process, and we all made it together in the collaboration, and just loved it. You're really fucking cool. Okay. I love you. <laughs> um, right over here. Um, so a lot of times, or I don't know, they've said that during these type of movies. Um, supernatural events happen. Did you or the anybody in the cast and crew experience anything supernatural that happened while you guys? Did anything otherworldly or supernatural happen during the filming of The Conjuring? No, but someone else may have something else. But I'm sorry, I'm kind of boring with those sorts of stories. Sorry. <laughs> Up there in the back. So, like you mentioned earlier, they're like they were talking about doing the whole Warrens like files thing and not only that but at the very end they alluded to the Amityville case so I was wondering first off um, any fun stories about James Wan on the set because I hear he's like hilarious and second off um, 
do you like hear him say anything about continuing? Like, do you know anything about that? Okay, if, if you didn't hear, the question was uh, any wacky James Wan stories and did you possibly overhear or in any of the PR for the film, have you continued to hear any hint of what could come? Well, I haven't heard any hint, um, but I know obviously that, you know, I, I may not be in it. I probably, I won't be in it. But I did say to James, I will do. I will be in makeup. I'll be one of the demons. You don't have to even know who it is. I swear, I'll do anything. So he hasn't responded back. But I'm just going to keep on him on that one. Um, but look, I mean, if this makes a lot of money, they, the people who own Fox, they'd be. I mean, Warner Brothers would be probably not a smart decision to not carry on, right? And I think Amityville is the next one. And I think there's plenty there. Yeah. Um, yeah. And any wacky wand stories? Um, gosh, I mean, I was working so much. I can't think of isolated w stories, but like he himself is just such a great spirit. I mean, he's just so up for everything. He loves his crew. He, he loves his actors. I mean, the main thing with James that I just remember is him saying like the different, ver the different degrees of getting the creep on, how we go through the script. And he's like, okay, now we're getting the creep on right now. And now here's the creep on right here. And I just love the way he broke the creep factor throughout the script. Awesome. Uh, yes, center back. Did you ever get, like, while watching the movie, did you ever get scared, like, even though you were in it? Did it ever, like, terrify you? Yeah, can, can you actually forget all of the onset? minute die of the creation of every moment and get caught up in your own movies yeah i mean in this one yes because i think that's because james is operating on an unconscious level and because of that it doesn't matter what i know here he's got me he's just got he knows the psyche he knows what makes us scared he's so smart yeah the uh blindfold scene with you is just creep factor 700 <laughs> it's just totally um, yes, right there. Is, do you watch your film? And if so, aside from this one, so what's your favorite film that you've done? What are some of your favorite films that you've done? I do, I do watch my films. I usually see it once when the, it shows. I don't, I, you know, I don't want to be one of those people that's watching my films as I'm 80 years old. Like, whoa, you know, I don't want to be that at all. Um, so I try to keep it one one per film, one 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 view per film, to keep it healthy. And um, I'm ready for my close up. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. Exactly. I don't want to go Sunset Boulevard. Yeah, exactly. Or Larry Hagman. I mean, yeah, he went yeah. that way too. I don't want to go either way there. <laughs> so. Um, what are the Larry Hagman stories? I haven't heard. Those. Oh well, Larry, the Hogan here. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, sorry. The, sorry. Um, <laughs> Um, a little moment. Um. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, well, I, lo I loved the process of Aishan Eddie Warhol because it was a great collaboration with Mary Heron. It was when New York was at the peak of its great indie days, and it just was emblematic of all that great stuff. I loved the the, the addiction that I did with Abel Ferrara. I love I love Arizona Dream. I love Girls Towns that I did with Jim McKay. Those are some, and this I guess I don't know a bunch of them, but those are some. Given what's happened to the indie film movement, where it's getting increasingly more difficult to make the sort of personal stories and then actually get them distributed, I mean, how do you feel about how it's changed so much? How the little films like, you know, uh, Dogfight and stuff, that's a movie that most people today would only ever get to experience on something like Netflix or, you know, through some streaming service because we very rarely get those sorts of films in theaters. As an actress, how does that make you feel? I mean, is it does it really matter that it's in the theater to you, or th that people just see the uh, performance in the widest form possible? I think I think theater is important. I mean, I think we also have to adapt, and I'm trying to be open to the changes to what's happening and to that. You know, like to TV. Like I was sort of judgmental about TV before HBO, and then it was like, well, wait a minute, it's just this box. Why am I judging? the way it's the platform that it's on you know the content can can change it can be good so i don't know like i feel i feel a, a lot of things but i let's put it this way i hope theater stays around because 
I think there is a nice experience about us sharing an experience together in a dark place, the thing's really big. Um, there's something nice about that. In the, uh, yes, right over here. Where was this film and they built this house specifically for the movie? So they went into North Carolina and um, they built the set and we used the exterior as a house for the exteriors just for like three days or so. And I saw another hand right there. Yeah. I don't know if you do villains or villains, but um, I think everybody here is here because we like good ghost stories. I know you said you had something special happen. If you don't want to talk about it, that's fine, but I thought I'd ask. He's praying for the ghost story. <laughs> I actually told it on um, a, a bio, uh, Bravo did some ghost story thing or something, so I've told it, so it's out. But um, basically, I was in Block Island. It's this little island off Rhode Island. It is filled with lots of lore, lots of weird things have happened there. I do this, um, I do this work with the 52nd Street Project. We do these plays with these kids. Um, uh, who live in Hell's Kitchen, and we go away in the summer with the kids, and we write a play with the kids and so on. And so the adults, we were in a house that someone had rented us, and but I thought it was odd that, that we were in the old house, and they had built a new house, and they were living in the new house. I thought it was that interesting. They'd given us this great old house. Why aren't they living here? Well, because, you know, lights were going on and off in the middle of the night, I was in the bathroom, it, it was always at three in the morning, you know, a door just slammed open and it was the meanest energy, it was like that energy when I was ganged up on in fourth grade, that just really nasty energy. And, um, and then it just sounded like a, a raw iron bed was being moved, thrown from one side to the other side upstairs. And I thought maybe one of the adults was, was doing things in her bedroom or something. <laughs> And, I, and I, I went into her room and it was so small, I thought there's no way she could have been doing this. It was just, it was just a lot of stuff and it, I just, I always wanted to have a ghost experience and then I was like, I, I, I just want this, I want, I'm sorry, I, I want, I just want to get out of here and I mean no harm and please stop. That's what I was reduced to tears, I was reduced to just like, I don't want any more ghost stories ever. That was that. You should totally stay at the Driscoll. Okay. Uh, <laughs> sorry, that's a local joke. Um, anybody else? Yeah, I'm Sarah Lynn Jones. Um, I have a question about the Bible verse that you said about the Bible verse. Yeah. Um, I was wondering if maybe we could take a little trip back to Pecker and any fun John Waters stories. Any fun John Waters stories? I don't think I can say a lot of them. They're, they're foul. They're all foul. It's an R-rated audience. Okay. <laughs> Um, I don't think we want to even go there. I think even I'd gross you out. Um, because I, do, I see John every summer in Provincetown, so I have just way too many. John is fantastic. I mean, first of all, you know, John hitchhikes in Provincetown. He doesn't drive, so he's always hitching and um, getting rides with whoever and does what whoever and whatever. Um, but, um, but I love John. I mean, John is, we need John. He's providing something nobody nobody else is that's for sure um and he'll teach you anything sexual you want to know <laughs> i'm not going to go there though i won't go there Darn. um anybody else well Lily, what are you working on right now what, what's going on with you well i just finished um a little a movie yesterday um Shot in seven days, two thousand dollars was the budget, and it's. I hope it's great. I think it's going to be great. I'm just going to take a minute to describe it because if we can get the word out to get this sold, um, it's this woman who has stage four breast cancer. She started filming this movie because she didn't know what to do with what the hell is going on with my life. I have two months to live, blah, blah. and then she thought, well, I want to have some a fiction part in the movie as well, with a character who's got breast cancer and a daughter and so on. And she always had me in mind for it and they wrote about 30 pages fiction. And so it's documentary and fiction. And we shot the fiction part over the seven days, but the documentary camera's filming while we're being filmed. It's just a lot of layers. Yeah. And so like, for instance, like um, we had a sequence yesterday where a fantasy sequence where I flew trapeze. Cause Jesus, you know, I dreamed of flying trapeze before I die. And then the director, 
flew, went up and flew on the trapeze in the documentary. So it was a lot of that stuff of just really, just moving stuff. So hopefully it'll be in a theater near you and I'll come back and do a Q&A. We'd love to have you. Great. Um, yes, right there. Uh, any chance of working with Mary Harrod again? Yeah, yeah, I love Betty Page as well. I, I, I really enjoyed that film too. Yeah, Mary Harrod, I live right behind her in um, Brooklyn. Um, we see each other all the time, talk all the time, and I'm, I'm sure we will, I'm sure. I know, I know she does. I'm gonna tell her. <laughs> and then right there. What's your favorite genre of film to do? Yeah, do you have a favorite genre to play in? No. <laughs> I mean, I like, I like, I like truth, even if it's funny or horror. I like, I like when it's based in truth. That's the reason why I think so many of us follow your work is that you do try to get to the truth of the characters that you're playing, as opposed to, you know, just bullshit posing and stuff, you know, I and mean, there's too much of that in Hollywood. Um, anybody else? Over here? Uh, speaking on the net, uh, Netflix platform, I know you worked on uh, Hamlock Grove. How was it working on a TV series or, you know, a series made for versus a movie? A lot more work for it. And do you I'm personally sure. uh, hate Eli Roth? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm going to be able to do a J.J. Abrams um, uh, uh, TV show in Vancouver in a couple of weeks. I'll be there, and it's a cop show set in 2048. So that's pretty. It's pretty. Feels pretty cool. Um, the Hemlock Grove was great because I think what Netflix is doing is really exciting, and it sort of reminded me of that Robert Evans, the kid stays in the picture energy. There was. It's sort of like the financial guys knew what to do, like just leave the artists alone. You know, and so it felt very creative on the set, and I, I loved it. I loved it. Um, that felt more like a movie. I think that the uh, the J.J. Abrams show that might feel a little bit more, um, you know, twenty two episodes, a little bit more episodes, maybe longer hours, but but it's it's interesting content. So for me, it's it's like doing a one act play or something each week. So I I, I think I'm gonna have a great time. So, did you hang out for any of that awesome werewolf transformation sequence? Uh, did you actually get to see uh, on Hemlock Grove? Because it's just such a magnificent effects sequence, and I, I, I just, from the sense of you being uh, in the um, uh, possession scene and wanting to vomit blood into you thing, it sounds like you're into that kind of thing. So, uh, what was it like shooting the werewolf transformation scene in Hemlock Grove? Well, I wasn't there for the real deal transformation yeah. stuff. And of course, wolves were around, and um, they don't like women around um, when the wolves are around. No. Uh, so we leave. And um, so I missed a lot of that, but I thought it was done, I thought it was fantastic. Yeah. Right? Yeah, no, I mean, it's really gotta be something when you have your version of what you see, and of course, you're, what you're actually seeing is just cameras shooting at you, but then when you actually see it put together with that incredibly insane yeah, it's just good stuff. Right over here. Do you want to continue to act? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I love. I'm a birder. I love birds, and um, I love doing that. I love trapeze. There's things I love to do, but I think I love acting, and I think I'd like to. I think I'd like to keep doing it. And if I if I don't love it, then I don't want to keep doing it. Is there any sort of thing that you wanted to do that you haven't gotten to do yet in terms of the type of character or type of genre that you haven't gotten to play? Because you've been all over the place so far. I'd like to try a musical. Yeah. A musical and a little bit more comedy. I'd like to do, go for some of that. I'd like to see the musical and some comedy. That'd be good. Um, well, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. And uh, we enjoyed the performance greatly. Uh, and uh, I just wish you the best of luck moving forward. And I hope you come back with some of your future projects. I'd love to sit and chat with you some more and eat some more Twizzlers. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.